Excellent. What's up everybody and welcome back to Paul's Hardware. Today's video is actually gonna be part one of a two part video. I'm actually pretty excited about this one because my idea was to look at uh, maybe next gen gaming to some extent. It's all about 4K, that's what you've probably been hearing a lot about so far and chances are you guys might be considering moving up to a 4K monitor. My idea was right now, what is the best reasonable 4K solution that you can come up with. Now, I know reasonable is sort of a, a, a relative term, so um, this might not make sense to everyone out there because the hardware I'm gonna be using is definitely somewhat expensive. However, it is not over the top expensive. So the idea was to take the best cards available from AMD as well as Nvidia um, to basically put them in the best situation possible and then see how they perform a 4K resolution when testing games. Now. I uh, also kind of threw in a, a few curveballs into the mix here because, well, for one thing, you might notice I've got a couple what appear to be R9 290Xs in front of me, but these are actually just the coolers. So this is one of the issues that came up when the 290X first came out was that the cooler was not quite up to task when it comes to cooling down this card since it is meant to run at a very high temperature. So. Today's video is going to be all about giving the R9 290X the best possible shot at giving us some really excellent performance with 4K gaming, since that is what AMD designed it for. To that end, I will be installing these two coolers over here. So we have the NZXT Kraken or Kraken G10, however you uh, prefer that pronunciation. Uh, those are the coolers themselves, and these are meant to work with an, any uh, Ace Tech cooler or a, a long list of Ace Tech. Uh, specific cooler. So for those, I have the Kraken or Kraken X40 down below. So uh, this video is going to be my removal of these uh, heatsink fans, installation of this hardware here, and uh, kind of a once over of that. Part two video is going to be the real meat of it, where I'm actually going to be showing you guys performance testing with a couple 290Xs in a two way crossfire, uh, as well as, well, the best card of it currently available from NVIDIA which is the uh, GTX Titan Black. So there's that guy right there. And since I've got two 290Xs, well, I guess I might as well do two Titan Blacks as well. So those are gonna be thrown into the mix. But that's all coming soon in part two of this video. So uh, I guess I'd better get to work. But for now, uh, let's take a look at me doing the installation procedure. I should say removal of the heatsink fans as well as the installation procedure for the Kraken G10 and the Kraken X40. So we'll start with a look at the Kraken X40 and G10 units themselves. The X40 is a 140 millimeter closed loop cooler originally designed for CPU use. As you can see here, it comes with a two year warranty. Over on the back, you have some marketing text and some pretty pictures. Ooh, 16 inch tubing. Also uh, an efficiency chart and a surface area diagram. It's larger and it's quieter and it's more effective than 120 millimeter counterparts. CPU socket compatibility list is right here. That's something that's actually useful. Uh, what's not mentioned here, compatibility with the Radeon R9 290X, kind of nice. Detailed specs are also listed on the other side. And next is the Kraken G10, Kraken G10, whichever, which will be allowing me to attach this CPU closed loop cooler to a graphics card. Note the sweet back plate and the tasteful branding right there. Also, it's available in red and black. And there's a chart on the back of the box that uh, shows it taking a GTX 780 from 80 degrees Celsius to 45 degrees Celsius under load compared to a stock cooler. Pretty nice. Also, it's easy to install. There's lots of compatibility with AMD and Nvidia graphics card. And as listed here, you'll note the long list of Ace Tech based coolers that it works with. So it's a great buy if you've already got one lying around that you can use along with the Kraken G10. That's a good form NZXT also by listing all the competing brands there along with their own. With the Kraken X40, you get a manual, a single 140 millimeter black and white fan, 800 to 2000 RPM and 2.2 millimeters of H2O static pressure. You also get some mounting rings and back plates and assortment of fasteners, none of which of these I'll actually be using except for the long mounting screws for the fan. The main unit of the X40 is a pre-filled 140 millimeter aluminum radiator, 16 inch rubber tubing and a combo pump slash copper base plate with pre-applied thermal paste which connects to the CPU or in my case the GPU. Inside the Kraken G10 box is the 92 millimeter fan that blows on the memory and VRMs. You also get mounting screws and the white GPU backplate, and then you get a manual and five zip ties. 
The white frame that holds everything together is also included. It interfaces with the pump block from the X40, as you can see by the little teeth area right there. Moving on here to installation, which is not terribly difficult, and it's actually explained pretty well in the manual. The main difficulty here for you might actually be getting the existing cooler off of your graphics card. At least that's what gave me a little bit of trouble. Here's my first run at the R9290X, so you'll see me removing here a dozen small screws and four of them for the GPU bracket, which you want to do in order so you don't put too much stress. My mistake here was to also go for the six screws on the sides of the shroud. It gets the plastic shroud off, which uh, can be useful for cleaning the R9290X, but it does not help with removing the rest of the cooler. Next up, I also removed the rear bracket, which was also unnecessary. <laughs> but uh, there are two screws on the rear bracket that I actually did need to remove, so getting those off was important. Uh, next up, some extremely careful prying right around the edges to loosen that cooler with thermal paste on the inside. Next, I went ahead and unplugged the fan and I put the thermal pads from the memory and the VRMs back on the stock cooler so I can use them again if I put it back on. Next up, I'm gonna give the GPU a good cleaning with uh, some alcohol and uh, some swabs here. You can also use coffee filters. And then on to assembling the Kraken G10. So first, I'm gonna screw in the fan, make sure it will be blowing air towards the graphics card. Then I'm gonna attach the four long screws to the correct holes in the back plate for your graphics card. They're labeled A, B, and C, and you can check that in the manual and then uh, go ahead and tighten those down with the included nuts. Feed the screws from that assembly through the back of your GPU's mounting bracket holes, and then finally you get to the somewhat delicate task of lining up the teeth on the G10 with the pump slash block from the X40, lowering that down onto the four screws protruding from the graphics card, all while trying not to smear the thermal paste, and then finally screwing down the four nuts that hold it in place in a rotational fashion so as not to put too much pressure on one corner of the GPU underneath. Hooray, it is now finished. Excellent. Now, I get to do it all over again, because I have a second one of these. This time with confidence. And also without removing parts I don't need to, hopefully.
So there you have it guys, uh, the offending coolers have been removed, I've installed the Kraken cooling hardware and from what I have read thus far, uh, these GPUs are going to really be opened up now that I have this cooling solution in place. And one other thing I might still do before I move on to video number two is install some VRM heat sinks on these because this is the one thing I've read about so far is that the uh, other elements besides the GPU, even though the GPU gets cooled really well with the G10, uh, the power delivery elements can actually get really hot. So I might drop some uh, little heat sinks onto those if I can scrounge some up, but we'll see how that goes. Other than that, I'm gonna get these installed, set up in Crossfire, start running some benchmarks, also going to head up to Titan Blacks, and uh, I think I'm going to throw some 780 Ti's in there as well just to kind of give a slightly more reasonable price to performance comparison there because the Titan Blacks are obviously very expensive. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, leave me a comment and some feedback. We'll see you all next time, hopefully very soon.